Heavenly Father, we thank you for this meeting. Thank you for your servants. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for the work we're doing. We're asking, Lord, to energize everyone. Yeah. Empower everyone. Yeah. We pray, Lord, that your word coming in today will enlighten us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Help us, Lord, to have the confidence and the boldness of faith to do everything you have called us to do. Yeah. That nothing will beat us back. Yeah. Nothing will hinder us. Yeah. Nothing will stop us. Yeah. Everyone will be unbeatable, yeah. unconquerable, yeah. unstoppable yeah. in this great work you have given us to do in Jesus' name. Yeah. Lord, breathe on this word. Yeah. And bring life to everyone. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at Matthew chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 16. Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. Behold, I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. Let's come to Luke chapter 10. And here we're looking at verse 3. Luke chapter 10, verse 3. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Tonight, as we look at those uh, leading scriptures, those verses, I'm talking on the sheep's conquering mission among wolves. The sheep's conquering mission among wolves that is the conquering mission of sheep among wolves we're coming back to matthew chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 16 those two verses are similar the difference you might find is that in verse 16 of matthew chapter 10 it mentions sheep in verse 3 of luke chapter 10 it mentions lambs the younger ones the weaker ones. And yet the Lord says, Behold, in both passages, I'm sending you forth as sheep, as the weak sheep, as the vulnerable sheep, as the unarmed sheep. I'm sending you forth to those ravening wolves. And yet he assured them they were going to conquer. He assured them they were going to have a conquering mission. First of all, he says, behold, which means pay attention, which means give heed, which means think about this, which means concentrate and focus on this because I'm doing what no other leader will do. I'm doing what no other captain of an army will do. I'm doing what no other director will do. I know that the people I'm sending you to, they're like wolves, ravening, ravaging, destructive. And yet, I'm sending you forth. I know you don't have their wild nature. I know you don't have their terrifying nature. I know you are not that strong and all the same and sending you forth to do a kind of work nobody has ever done. And so as we consider our ministry and we consider what the Lord has called us to do and we realize I am weak, they are strong. I am meek, they are mighty. I am vulnerable, they are destructive. I am simply unarmed and there's nothing to defend myself in the natural. And yet they are armed to the teeth and they are destructive and terrifying. And yet because we know here is the Lord, the God of heaven and earth and the one of all power that is sending us forth, he says we're going to succeed. And as we go, we don't have any fear, we don't have any timidity that because of who we are and because of who they are, we might not succeed. Success is sure. Upon this rock, I will build my church, 
and the gates of hell with all the wolves that may be there they will not prevail against the church in jesus name in first corinthians chapter one First Corinthians chapter 1 reading from verse 26 it says for ye see your calling brethren he has called us he called us to salvation wonderful he's called us to service marvelous he's called us to sacrifice and he says as we go and we look at the people we are sent to and we look at their action and we look at even their faces and we look at their nature they might be like wild ravening wolves but all the same he says I'm sending you forth as sheep as lambs even among the wolves and you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty and not many noble are called but god has chosen listen to this the foolish things of the world to confound the wise he has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty and then he tells us in verse 28 and the base things of the world and the things which are despised as God chosen yea and the things which are not that is the non entities that is the people you count as a zero the people you count as nothing the things that are not he has chosen them to confound the things that Ah, so then as we look at the calling that we have and sometimes this is the excuse we make and this is why we feel you know i cannot do this i cannot do that i may not be qualified for that i may not be efficient in this i may not be competent in that we're not their match but we have the holy ghost and the holy ghost within us is beyond their match and because of what we have and because of the power we have we're going to succeed in jesus name he has sent the weak to convert the mighty he has sent the base to convert the great he has sent the despised to convert the honorable he has sent the harmless to convert and to bring into the kingdom those who are fierce and those who are terrible or even terrifying he has sent the simple to the sophisticated and he has sent unarmed sheep to ravening wolves that's why we're looking at those uh, verses of scriptures very intently very much uh, very carefully I want to analyze all these what is this and what does this mean for you and for me how does this give us success how does this give us the confidence and the authority that we know here is what the lord has called us to and we're going to succeed and i see you succeeding in jesus Jesus name the mission of the sheep the conquering mission of the sheep among the wolves we're looking at this on the three perspectives number one the work committed to his servants the work he has committed to his servants the work committed to his servants number two their wisdom combined with simplicity their wisdom combined with simplicity number three the wolves converted through the sheep the wolves converted through the sheep let's come to number one the work committed to his servants we're coming to matthew chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 1 now because this is what went on before that verse 16 before he said behold i send you forth a sheep among the wolves it says in verse 1 and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples he gave them power he gave strong clear spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease now you understand although they look sheepish on the outside 
although their courage appears to be weak and insignificant they have something of heaven inside them they have the power of the holy ghost within them they have the authority of the spirit within them they have the power that will cast out devils and all those wild people and all those wolves that may be indwelt by the evil spirit indwelt by the by the spirit of magic indwelt by the spirit of occultism all those uh, wolves they will bend and bow to the power of the holy ghost within them and between you before you they will bow in jesus name look at verse look at verse six but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel go rather to the lost sheep of the house of israel where you combine verses with verse 16 it tells you when somebody has gone out of the fold and they've gone out of uh, the the fold and the flock of the lord and they've come the lost sheep they become wolves they, have, they were in the fold before they knew the lord before of, of course their fathers knew the lord these were the children of abraham the descendants of abraham and they said abraham is our father but they have become the lost sheep of the house of israel and these ones are referred to by the lord jesus christ that they are wolves have any wolves and they're destructive and i'm sending you unto them but because we have what they don't have and we have what they need whatever may be their wild nature we're going to conquer them Amen. look at verse 7 and i see go preach that's the power as you go preach when you proclaim the word of god that word of god is hammer that word of God is fire. And that word of God is a sword. You think about the word as a sword. You think about the word as hammer. You think about the word as fire. And it says this is what you have. Although on the outside you might look sheepish. On the outside you might look weak. On the outside you might look like you, are, you don't have any backbone. But you have something coming out of you. The fire the sword and the hammer it will overcome all those wolves look at verse 7 again as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand it's saying that you represent heaven you represent the eternal you represent the almighty and you represent the king of kings and the lord of lords and the power of the kingdom is what you carry the authority of the kingdom is what you carry the anointing of the kingdom is what you carry and it says you tell them the kingdom of heaven is Satan whatever they have of the kingdom of darkness of the kingdom of this world everything will crumble and be crushed as a coming in Jesus name look at verse 8 heal the sick and there's no qualification as to the sick here whether it's terminal sickness temporary sickness incurable sickness whatever it is go heal the sick the wolves need that the people of the world need that they might be wild they might be worldly and they might be wealthy and they might be terrible but they're sick there's sickness all over the world and it gives you the power it gives you the authority it says go and when you go there don't argue with them you're not fighting with the wolves you are converting them don't fight them you are not winning an argument with the wolves you are destroying the works of the devil in their lives so in their families heal the sick and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead and cast out devils freely ye have received and freely give and you see that verse 8 heal the sick they've not seen that for more than 400 years between Malachi and Matthew you have 400 years in between and they've never seen anything like that any prophet rising up and healing them I'm going to extend that they have not seen that in a thousand years you see the prophets that came out later like Isaiah he was basically a false teller he was prophesying the word of the Lord and he was saying that this is what God will do. He spoke about all the other nations and spoke about Israel and spoke about everything. But basically, he wasn't a healing prophet. 
And then as you come to Jeremiah, great, great prophet, he wasn't a healing prophet. You come to Daniel, Daniel was not a healing prophet. And you come to all the other prophets, Hosea and Amos and Joel and Jonah and Malachi. They were prophets prophesying what was going to happen. They were not healing prophets. The Lord was telling them, I've given you a key. I've given you something that has not been done in more than 1,000 years since the time of of Elijah and Elisha those who are healing prophets and he says I give you this thing supernatural I give you this thing that will look strange to the wolves the wolves will not expect this and when you say silver and gold have I known in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and that happens those wild wolves they'll begin to think we've not seen that in 400 years we've not seen that in 500 years a thousand years we've not seen that since the time of elijah elisha this has not happened they will listen and you have the key in your hand as you go heal the sick i said heal the sick and then cleanse the lepers do you remember the last time the leper was cleansed the time of elisha is saying something spectacular something strange something that other people have not seen all these many years the key is in your hand somebody has a key over there I said the key is in your hand It is in the name of Jesus He came from heaven He came to save And he came to heal And he came to deliver Look at this one And it says cast out devils That was rare That was rare Have you seen all those um, prophets of the Old Testament What did they cast out devils They didn't cast out devils If anybody had any problem of madness or whatever What did they do Did you hear Akish He said what do you bring a madman to me what am i going to get him away um, is he going to dwell with me only at the time of david and that's more than 1000 years before this time we're talking about when the evil spirit came upon saul and then he played with his hand on the harp and the evil spirit departed but it wasn't a permanent deliverance because another time the evil spirit came again temporarily and then as uh, this uh, david will play evil spirit will depart every time it to come again then they call David again come and play because it has come again but it was only at this time think about that a permanent deliverance and as the key we have we are delivered ourselves our children are delivered members of our families they are delivered and our neighbors and we go out we go in the name of Jesus any demon there you will cast out devils and you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in Jesus name that's what gave the sheep the boldness we have something the world does not have we have something that all their false prophets they do not have we have something that the nation of Israel had not seen for 400 years 1000 years or even more and because we have that that's the reason why we can go out with confidence fearlessly and the work of God will prosper in our hands in Jesus name and it says freely ye have received stop there for a moment freely ye have received the way you receive salvation freely is the way you receive the gift of healing the way you receive forgiveness freely without paying anything for that forgiveness the same way you receive the power to cast out devils the same way a man a woman will receive salvation and it's not because you are a man you have salvation because you're a woman you have salvation because you are wealthy you have salvation because you are knowledgeable you have salvation because you are fast and quick and sharp you have salvation no freely you receive salvation and Jesus said in the same way in the same way without paying money and without paying anything you receive the power to heal I said you receive the power to heal and you know what the way when you receive salvation you might feel happy you might feel normal you might feel whatever the salvation is not in the feeling the salvation is in the faith I said the salvation is in the faith the same thing the gift of healing is not in the feeling it is in the faith and he said the same way you have received all the other gifts of God that's the same way you receive this he says freely you have received and thank god i received i said thank god i received 
if you don't go out to go and demonstrate it and make use of it how would you know you have received this week you'll go out and demonstrate it you will heal the sick you will cast out devils you will cleanse the lepers and then whatever miracle is near by those wild worldly wolves over there you're going to give them in jesus name and then it says freely give freely give and as we give the lord will support his word and back up his word in the lives of the people in jesus name do you know he was talking to the 12 here because we read in verse 1 that it says and when he had called unto him the 12 disciples the 12 disciples those were apostles and he said unto them that he was sending them forth as sheep among wolves let's come to chapter 10 of luke luke chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 1 in luke chapter 10 verse 1 after these six the lord appointed all the 70 also can you see it's a new set of people it's a new group of people he it said it's a 70 and uh, he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whether he himself should come look at verse 2 it says therefore said he unto them the harvest truly is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest verse 3 now go your ways how many of them I said how many of them go your ways how many people are we talking about here 70 people behold I send you forth as tell me lambs among wolves ordinarily naturally the wolves when they see the lambs they said this is free food they devour them and they eat them up but this one with the power of the holy ghost you cannot eat up the people that have the holy ghost if you have that anointing if you have that power if you have that unction if you have that authority if you have that confidence if you have that enablement if you have that empowerment that the lord has given it says i'm sending you forth as lambs before the wolves or among the wolves and that's why we succeed because of the power in verse one don't forget that don't forget that it's not just a natural lamb but the empowered lamb the endowed lamb the enabled lamb it is these people that are filled with the power of the holy ghost that is sends forth that he is in that measure at that time and when he came back and reported what happened look at verse 17 in verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy you return with joy no, there's joy in service when you go out in soul winning and then you preach the word because that's what he has given us to do you preach the word and you invite them to come to christ and you give their lives to the lord those who are smoking indian apes they get convicted and those who are into the streets uh, under the bridge they come and they get converted and the people that were useless before they came and they got converted transformation happens in their lives it gives you joy and these people had gone out and he said i didn't know we could do that i didn't know i could accomplish that i went out weak i went out vulnerable i went out without almost anemic no backbone as lamb and i saw those wild people ordinarily i wouldn't talk to those people ordinarily i wouldn't approach them for anything but you know as i began to talk about jesus about jesus our savior about jesus our lord i began to say you know if you're sick you'll be healed i said if you have any oppression you'll be delivered and then they said yes i have this problem here and i just laid hands on them i said in jesus name they were healed they were surprised i was surprised because god will surprise you it will surprise you with miracle it will surprise you with signs and wonders and so they came back they came back with joy the next time i see you have joy of testimony and then it said the same lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name that's the secret through thy name you go out in the name of the lord 
you will not fail you will succeed you, you might feel weak don't think about that you might feel like a little lamb don't think about that you might feel like a vulnerable sheep don't think about that but you know the power is inside you because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world and the one inside you will conquer that one in the world in jesus name and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning fall from heaven behold I give unto you what do you have now I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions uh, you know what he's saying he said what you've done now you have conquered the wolves now I'm going to give you extra power greater power mightier power you are not just to conquer the wolves you're going to conquer the serpents and you're going to conquer the scorpion and then he says over all the power of the enemy you conquer every enemy against the gospel in jesus name those enemies of christ you'll conquer and convert them enemies of the way of life and the way of truth you will conquer them and convert them and the enemies of righteousness they hate righteousness to the core they hate holiness to the core and while you are coming they recognize uh -huh, uh -huh. deeper life uh, deeper life people holy 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 you say yes i'm coming that's why i came and before you finish that conversation you'll conquer them and convert them because it says over all the power of the enemy and not Nothing and nothing, somebody there and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We're on the victory side, and you're going to win the race and win the day in Jesus' name. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. The work committed to his servants look at um, exodus chapter 3 exodus chapter 3 and we're looking at it in verse 10 it says in verse 10 come now therefore i will send thee unto pharaoh have you ever thought about that it's like sending the sheep to the wolf because pharaoh was the ultimate power of the day pharaoh was an emperor pharaoh had the power of life and death pharaoh had the power to oppress pharaoh he was the wolf and yet they say uh, moses you know what moses was he was a fugitive he ran into exile these were the one that did the unthinkable in the land of egypt and when pharaoh knew it he ran away and this timid fugitive and this vulnerable fugitive and this one a past criminal but now forgiven and totally changed a sheep the lord said i'm sending you unto pharaoh and then he says that thou mayest bring forth my people the children of israel out of egypt you think of egypt those were murderers they took all those children of the israelites they threw them into the river they didn't even think anything about that those were the wolves and then you see those magicians they had occultic the power and god sent moses unto them if you know the story a long story that we can cut short here eventually those people were delivered in fact one day um, pharaoh told them moses you can go and bless me and pray for me also they'll be converted i said they'll be converted even though moses was a weak a fugitive he came back and the power power of God was manifested my own time has come I said my own time has come I will do something that somebody will write about what are you I will do something that somebody will talk about there must be something in your life there must be a day in your life there must be an event in your life when you can say I felt like a sheep I felt like a lamb and I felt that that was a wolf I felt that what was a, a ferocious a fierce man a fierce woman I opened my mouth I was still afraid I opened my mouth I was still feeling I don't know what will happen all of a sudden they were convicted all of a sudden they were saying what shall I do all of a sudden I find myself saying kneel down I'll pray for you all of a sudden I found I was saying repent if you repent God will forgive you when you started you started in fear when you end your end as a conqueror Amen. 
Or when you started talking, it was like, well, this ever work, I'm just doing my duty here. I'm just doing something here. By the time you finish, you went from doing duty, you are now in dominion. Because now you have authority. You see, that's what uh, Moses felt. He said, who am I that I will go unto Pharaoh? I'm like a stammerer. I don't know how to talk. He remembered Egypt. Those who are wolves over there, the magicians were there, and Pharaoh was there, and all those armies of Egypt, they were there. Send another person that you're saying. And then God said, I know you as Tamara, who created the mouth, who created the ears, who created the person. I created you. I will use you just like you are. And just like you are, you are going back to that world, and you are speaking the word unto them. I see the world getting converted through you. And I see all those who are surrendering their lives through you. It will happen in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 1. The sheep is being sent to the wolves. Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm reading here from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. The Lord will say to you. You know, if the Lord is with the sheep, that's all we need. That's all we need because the Lord will protect you. The Lord will empower you. The Lord will allow you. The Lord will enable you. And you will do everything he has sent you to do. He says, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth mouth. That's all we need. I put my words in their mouth. That's fire right there in your mouth. I put my words in your mouth. That's a sword right there in your mouth. I put my words in your mouth. That's a hammer right there. It will break all the rocks in pieces. And then it says in verse 19, in verse 19 it says, they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee. They shall not prevail against thee. An amen that comes from your heart. Yeah. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. The wolves of this world will not crush your bone. Yeah. They will not touch your life. Yeah. You're on the path of duty. Even though you feel weak, even though you feel vulnerable, even though you feel they will crush you and eat you up, it will not happen. Yeah because the sheep is the one that will lead them and rule them and convert them in Jesus name Ezekiel chapter 2 the sheep among the wolves the sheep among the wolves we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 2 and here I'm reading from verse 3 Ezekiel chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 3 and he said unto me son of man I send thee to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me they and their fathers have transgressed against me even until this very day. Those are the wolves right there. Rebellious people of Israel and religious people of Israel and the violent people of Israel. The destructive people of Israel said Ezekiel, you might feel weak and feel timid but all the same you're the sheep I'm sending to the wolves and because I'm sending you, I am with you. I will deliver you. I will support you. I will sustain you. And you're going to be victorious over them. What the Lord told Ezekiel, Ezekiel is gone. This is now for you. Amen. For they, in verse 4, for they are impudent children and chief hearted. Those are the words. I do send thee unto them. They are hard hearted and they are stiff necked all the same I'm sending you to them and he says and thou shalt say thus says the Lord God that's your victory thus says the Lord God that's what you're telling them you're telling them this is the word of the Lord and that word of the Lord will bring them to their knees in Jesus name in John chapter 17 I'm reading from verse 17 I'm reading from verse 18 
17 John chapter 17 we're reading from verses 17 and 18 the Lord Jesus Christ talking to his own disciples and through them talking to us it says sanctify them through thy truth and thy word is truth and then he said as thou hast sent me into the world even so have I sent them into the world in the same way as Christ was sent here into this wild world wicked world into this world of wolves the Lord has sent you and the Lord has sent me and we're going to do the work creditably well in Jesus name uh, John chapter 20 verse 21 in verse 21 they said Jesus to them again peace be unto you I said peace be unto you Amen. as my father have sent me even so have I sent you even so have I sent you that same commission has been given to us and he is the one that has sent us he the Lord of heaven and earth has sent us and because he has sent us we're going to do what he has told us to do as I told you before we're not going to fight with the wolves because we're not told to fight with them and our message our ministry our mission is not to fight but is to bring them to the Lord how do we do that number one to convince them we convince them of their error we convince them of their enmity against God we convince them of the destiny of those who remain enemies of God until they die. From convincing them, we're sent to convict them. They become convicted and they begin to ask men and brethren, what shall we do? They are pricked to their hearts. They see the nature of their sin and they see the consequence of their sin. They see the evil of their ways and then they say, we we'll want to come to the right side of the Lord. We want to be converted. What shall we do? We convince them. We convict them. We convert them. We convert them. And as many as said this word, they joyfully receive the word. That's Peter, about 3,000 souls. And they were converted. They are convinced. They are convicted. And they are converted. And they are conformed to the image of Christ. After they are converted, we bring them in. We follow up. We disciple them. We help them. We teach them so that they can be conformed to the image of the Lord. And finally, we conserve them. Conserve them in the kingdom. They are brought in. And they are kept in. We bring them in. And then we make them them to stay. Christ sent the sheep or the weapons of prudence and wisdom. Weapons of prudence and wisdom. The weapons of peace and simplicity. Those are weapons strange to those wolves. They were not expecting that. They thought you'll come in their way and you will have their own style as they argue, you argue. No, they come with argument. You come with the power of the name of Jesus and they are brought to their knees and they are converted eventually in Jesus. Jesus name. Point number two, the wisdom combined with simplicity. The wisdom combined with simplicity. Uh, let's come back to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, I was reading here from verse 16. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. How do we act? How do we talk? How do we preach? How do we relate? How do we interact? What do we do? Here is it. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. He said, as we're going forth, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Uh, first of all, you know, there are people that will not see anything good about any creature. They think the serpent is totally evil, completely evil, but God, you know, Jesus Christ, without him was not anything made. All things were made by him. He is also creator. He is God, he is Lord, he is Emmanuel, God with us, and he is creator. And he knows some good qualities that the serpents have, and he said, do 
don't uh, be involved with the poison of the serpent that's not you shouldn't have that and don't be involved with the subtlety of the cleverness of uh, the serpent that's not uh, what should be with you you should not have the sting of the serpent but the wisdom of the serpent is talking about being wise without the sting being wise without the poison being wise without the subtlety of the serpent that's why immediately he said you're wise as serpents but you are harmless harmless as those it says you are going to combine those two things the wisdom and the simplicity of the dove why did he talk about the dove because you see the dove has no horn to attack the dove has no horns like some bees some animals have horns to attack he says i'm sending you forth not with horns to attack and the dove has no teeth to bite you're not going out to bite them you're not going out to injure them you're not going out to inflict any injury upon them i see those doves they do not have any sting to wound they're not like scorpions they do not have any sting to wound he says you'll be harmless you'll be simple as the doves and they do not have any intention to hurt that is when you are going out it's not like that's a wolf and the lord is sending us out a sheep among the wolves he did this to christianity he did this to my fellow brother he did this to my fellow sister and i'm going out now you're going out of the wisdom of the serpent and you're going out of the gentleness and the meekness and the harmlessness of the dove the the serpent without the sting the serpent without the hurtful subtlety now what do we learn about the wisdom of the serpent those who have studied all these uh, various scriptures they tell us number one that they have clear sharp focused eyes to see they see their targets and it says that the lord is saying be as wise as the serpents have the focused uh, attention and have the focused sight and the clear sight you see the target you understand the target you see the serpents they understand their targets and they see those targets and they are at that target and they're not distracted here and there jesus said i'm sending you for a sheep among the wolves and you have that sharp focus and sharp sight you're able to see the experts tell us about the serpents they said they have ears to the storm ears to the storm they can sense the storm coming from a far distance before it gets to them and so they're able to take preventive measures before the storm gets to them and jesus christ was saying be as wise as those serpents that you know that the storm is coming something destructive is coming and you see it afar and the prudent man foresees evil and he hides himself and that's what the lord is saying and uh, those who have also seen uh, you know the ways of the serpent they tell us that the serpent can crawl and go to the places where other bees and animals cannot get to you see the other animals because of their size and because of the world moment there are things that can hinder them but for serpents any where they want to get to they just you know wiggle their ways and they get there and the lord is saying have the wisdom that if there is a place to go for example we're going on mission and then some people say you know they don't get them visa to get here and to get there it says be as wise as a serpent that you can get anywhere you ought to get to and nothing will hinder you you know the wisdom of the serpents they avoid unnecessary exposure unnecessary exposure Exposure. As happens, do not make a noise saying, I am here and look at my color and look at my appearance and i am whatever no serpents don't do that they just get to the place in fact before you know that they are there you just discover them and because you discover them suddenly and you're not expecting a serpent should be there you become afraid of them and it says we should be as wise as the serpents you're not making a noise you know sometimes in some areas of our country it is uh, dangerous to make all the announcement 
were coming over to that place and when we get to that place all those people that say that don't believe in Jesus we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we say some you know extraneous things over the radio over the television and we're making publicity we're coming to shake that place and we're coming this one happened that place that one happened that way Jesus said the wise as serpents all that announcement and all that uh, noise making stop all that and get there and before you know what the people are surprised when did he come we didn't even see poster we didn't even see this and now he has come he says have that wisdom that's what the Lord is saying be as wise as serpents and then he tells us to be as harmless as the doves as harmless as the doves we're harmless in what way are we harmless number one there's no sharpness on our tongue no sharpness on the tongue it says you know there are some people that uh, preach they're talking to a well-known smoker and they're hammering on the smoking already you are going to hell already that smoke is uh, a predecessor is a forerunner of the hell you are getting to that's been sharp in your tongue or see somebody who is a lady on the street and then you say i come to you i want to talk to you on salvation you see when you have salvation all these uh, useless kind of life you know you'll not live like that anymore you will make money in an honest way are you insulting her are you abusing her you see you should be as harmless as the doves there should be no sharpness on your tongue here you are i'm, I'm giving you the gospel i'm telling you polygamy all polygamies will go to hell if you die today today two wives three wives you are gone you are for you'll be suffering like this and then you try to describe yourself what are you doing there should be no sharpness in the tongue that's why he says that you will be as harmless as the doves no sting in your tail because you're not a scorpion no sting in your in your tail it says you don't want to you know put poison in anybody's life that after you are spoken to them they forget every other good thing you said they forget every other illustration you made and that sting the one that pinched them that that fellow at the infantry and the audacity to tell me this he just looked at my face and he told me this painful painful thing that you said and that sting is what they remember he says don't do that and be as wise as the serpents and then you are as harmless as the doves no sarcasm on your target at your target sarcasm you know there are people they have studied languages they have studied uh, you know how to use a particular sentence and pinch somebody and prick somebody and annoy somebody he said if you're going to win souls you're not going to have sarcasm sarcasm as your target you target them because you love them because you want to win them you don't want to do anything that they're remembering they'll be avoiding you when you are coming the next time they remember that thing that sarcasm they remember how you use the language and you know now they are still feeling the pain and the pinch no sarcasm in your target no spike or the truth spike spikers and you know they are those uh, sharp sharp uh, nails underneath the you know the um, athletes um, shoes that you know will get right into the spike you don't spite people that's what Jesus said he said as you go to them you're wise you want to catch them you want to draw them and you want to bring them into the kingdom there'll be no spike in your testimony and there'll be no spike in the truth you're telling this truth with love it draws them I like to listen to that sister I like to listen to that brother anytime he comes like this even though I know I'm a sinner and I think he knows who I am I think he knows how dirty I am but he talks with me with so gentleness it's like Jesus Christ can you give me some water to drink there how can you ask me for water you're a Jew and I am a Samaritan if you knew the gift of God and what I could give you the water of life that you will thirst no more you would have asked me I would have given you that water of life you have that give me that water to drink all right go call your husband 
go call your husband before I drink that water. Well, I have no husband to call. You said the truth because you've had five husbands, and the man you are staying with now is not even your husband. I guess you are a prophet. Because how could you have known that you are a prophet? You see how the Lord was leading her into the salvation. All right, her father, since you are a prophet, tell me this. They worshipped on this mountain. And you said in Jerusalem, we ought to worship. And he said, woman, uh, the time is coming. When those who worship God who will not worship here or there, they will worship in spirit and in truth. Okay, I know you are a prophet, but I'm waiting for the Messiah. When that Messiah comes, he will tell us all things. Uh, you think uh, the Messiah will come to Samaria? Of all places, you're six. Uh, have you read your Bible? When the Messiah comes, he'll tell you all things. You see, he'll come to prostitutes when he comes. You see, he'll come to those who have made their lives. No, not at all. Be wise as serpents and be gentle and harmless as those. I that speak unto you, I am he. And the woman believed. You lead those people to believe him. I said you lead them to believe in She let her water pot And said you want to take all the water There I give all that to you And went to the sea and said come see a man That told me everything I ever did Is not this the Christ Wise as serpents And gentle and harmless as those There's no scourge In your testimony No scourge in your testimony You're giving testimony And you're telling you know somebody is a bad person I used to be a wicked person, you know, like you. In fact, I used to do this and do this, and indirectly you are whipping them. Indirectly, you bring a scourge on them. You scorn them, and you de you deprive them of their dignity. Don't do that. It says uh, you'll be as wise as serpents, and you'll be as harmless as the doves, and there's no scorn even in your thought, even in your thought. No scorn in your thought, in your, in your heart, in your thought. As you are looking at the person, hmm, I won't say it, but look at how dirty. I won't say it, but look at how uh, promiscuous. I won't say it, but look at how covetous. I won't say it, but uh, she's not even putting on enough clothes. Look at how scanty the clothes she's putting on is. You scorn them. And people can tell. They can see that on your face. They can see. When you look down on somebody, when you look down on a fellow human being, a fellow creature like you are, without the grace of God, you wouldn't be who you are. You wouldn't be as clean as you are. You wouldn't be as clean as you are there should be no scorn or scorning in your thought and no sign of triumph no sign of triumph after they say something and then you answer them and they see that they are foolish then they say another thing then you answer them again they see that they are not knowledgeable you they say another thing and you answer all their questions and they feel they are defeated you know no, that's not your aim that's not your goal you're not there to defeat them and win an argument you are there to win a soul and therefore there will be no sign of triumph because the Lord has given you that knowledge that knowledge is to be used to bring them to the Lord remember to convince them remember to convict them remember to convert them remember it is to conform them to the image of Christ and remember it is to conserve them in the kingdom of God and the Lord will give us all the wisdom you will need all the simplicity we need so that these uh, people that were reaching out to they'll be converted in Jesus name I said we're reaching out to them are you reaching out to somebody I said are you reaching out to anybody is there any name on your mind I'm going to talk to that person you see all this is the Lord is telling us when he told them he told the disciples then he sent them out did anybody remain back and uh, you know I have all the power I want to enjoy the power did they uh, remain where they were tell me out loud what did they do they went out and were going out to reach them we're going to have to reach many lives and then you will have your converts in jesus name as ignorant as we are as vulnerable as we are we are the sheep and we are the lamb and we're going to reach out to those wolves we're going to bring them into the kingdom in jesus name proverbs chapter 30 
Proverbs chapter 30. I'm reading from verse 18. It says, There are three things which are wonderful for me. Yea, four things I know not. The way of an eagle in the air and the way of a serpent upon a rock. It says, uh, They are wonderful for me to behold. And that's what the Lord is saying. That we shall see the wisdom. And as we see the wisdom in the way of the eagle, in the way of the serpent, we shall learn something from that. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 18, and we're reading from verse 4. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 4. It says, The words of a man's mouth as deep waters. And then it says, And the wellspring of wisdom as the flowing brook that will suit them and refresh them and, and make them make the thirsty to become totally refreshed that's why he's saying we should have that kind of wisdom the wisdom that brings people to the lord we're looking at a proverbs chapter 11 and verse 30 proverbs 11 verse 30 the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life and he that winneth souls is wise he that winneth souls she that winneth souls who are the winners of souls over here you'll be wise the wisdom that we need god will give unto us in jesus name the right word a soothing word a comforting word a word that will say no matter who you are you might feel condemned but the lord has not come to condemn you he's come to convert you he's come to bring you unto himself words of wisdom and words of knowledge and words of simplicity that as we talk to them they will come to know the lord through us and it will happen in jesus name we'll come to point number three now the wolves converted through the sheep the wolves converted through the sheep we're coming to matthew chapter 10 matthew chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 16 Matthew chapter 10 verse 16 Behold, I send you forth He has sent us forth And we are going to go forth I send you forth as sheep In the midst of wolves Be ye therefore wise as serpents And harmless as doves This kind of wisdom The wisdom that converts And the wisdom that brings people to know the Lord Look at verse 19 In verse 19 it tells us It says but when they deliver you up Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given to you in that same hour what ye shall speak. It shall be given to you in that same hour what ye shall speak. Look up here for a moment. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't, when we read these verses, we don't uh, think about them. As you are here today, you pray that God will give you wisdom. Are you going to pray? Yes. And God will give you wisdom. Yes. I said, God will give you wisdom. Yes. Now, when God gives you the wisdom, you will not know that you have the wisdom. And therefore, many people, they'll be waiting. Oh, God, give me wisdom. Oh, God, give me wisdom. Oh, God, give me wisdom. Because you don't feel any different. You don't know that God has given you the wisdom. But God will answer your prayers. And then he says, you go forth. You might still feel I'm like I was. I'm as foolish as I was. I'm as unwise as I was. There's nothing extra added to me but it's there i said it is there and it says when you go don't think what will i say when you get there as you open your mouth like this it will fill your mouth in jesus name that's why it says it will be giving you at that same hour what you shall speak for it is not ye that speak but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you that spirit is indwelling you and that spirit will speak through you in Jesus name we're looking at uh, Luke chapter 10 Luke chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 3 go your ways behold I send you forth as lambs among wolves 
as lambs among wolves but now you stop thinking about your physical condition about your natural condition about your sheep you see the sheep is so very different from the wolves the wolves you can tell that's a wolf and the sheep you can tell that's a sheep and it might appear that naturally as people look at you they say so this one is one of them this one is also one of the preachers this one is also one of the evangelists okay so this one is a song winner this is the one they sent forth here don't you remember that's what Goliath thought that's what Goliath felt when God sent David the shepherd the sheep that came to Goliath and then he said okay you are the one they sent come I give your body, I give your flesh to the fowls of the air. And David was not intimidated because I send you forth a sheep in the midst of wolves. We will conquer those wolves. We will convert those wolves that I come to you in the name of the Lord. That's the name you have. And you are going out in that name. You are going out in that authority. You are going out in that power. And the same way that David conquered Goliath, you'll conquer them in Jesus' name. Yes. You, are you there? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. Will you do it? Yes. God said you'll do it and you must do it. I will have the victory through you in Jesus' name. And then look at verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy. We're coming back with testimonies. We're coming back with converts. We're coming back with trophies. The people who have won to the Lord in the name and the power of the Lord. Saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said, I beheld Satan as like fall from heaven can you imagine these 70 people they were not even apostles but they were disciples of the Lord and they went out he said go out they didn't feel any bigger any taller any stronger but he said he said so and because he said so I have what he said I have I have what he said he has given. I possess what he said he has bestowed. And because they believed that, when they went out, they were surprised. They said, even the devils, even the evil spirits, they were subject unto us through thy name. They were surprised. I just mentioned the name of Jesus. Remember, Christ has not died yet. Remember, Christ had not been buried yet. Remember, Christ has not risen yet. This was before the crucifixion. If that happened before the crucifixion after the crucifixion after his death and after the resurrection when Jesus said all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth and he says go ye therefore we're going and when we go we're coming back with great resource in Jesus name and now he says behold I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and then he says and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall thy enemies hurt you what if they give me something to eat nothing shall thy enemies hurt you what if they put something on the ground for me to step on and nothing shall by enemies hurt you what if they take my name to their shrine tell me and nothing shall by enemies hurt you what if they use padlock and they padlock my mouth nobody can do that from now on and nothing shall by enemies hurt you what if they stand for me and wait for me in the office and they say we're going to do this and we're going to do that is a bragging of the world but we sheep we have conquered in Jesus name and nothing shall by any means such you it says notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you but rejoice rather rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven where is my name I said where is my name where is your name it is written in heaven and no power can go there and do anything evil and say they will change your destiny no they cannot 
they'll change your progress no they cannot they will reverse the good things the lord has concerning you no they cannot you're secured forever in jesus name and that's that's why the people went and that's why and that's how all those worlds at that time they were converted and that's why the people said the people that turned those that have turned the world upside down they have come hither also and we have now replaced those apostles they are gone we're here all those 70 we have replaced them they are gone and we are here we are now going out we're going forth and everywhere we go there will be conversion everywhere we go there will be power manifestation everywhere we go there will be the supernatural impacting the lives of the people in Jesus name Amen. now it is your turn and you are going to overcome yeah. I'm looking for the overcomer there you'll overcome in Jesus name you know why because as he empowered them he empowers us as he emboldened them he has emboldened us as he endowed them he has endowed us number one is going before you number two is coming behind you number three is above you number four is underneath you number five he is around you number six is within you number seven he is with you there's no place for your enemy there's no place for the people that say they want to hurt you because god has occupied everything in your vicinity all around you you are protected in jesus name number one the lord will go before you isaiah chapter 45 isaiah chapter 45 and here we're reading from verse 2 isaiah chapter 45 and we're reading from verse 2 i will go before thee I was waiting for an amen there. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And so, anywhere you're going, understand the Lord is going there before you. No evil will come upon your life. Not only that is going before you, is coming behind you. Behind you. We're looking at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 19. Exodus chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 19. In verse 19, and the angel of God, which went before the camp of the children of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it stood between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. The Lord is also behind you. It stands between you and your enemy. And if you try to shoot any arrow, it must get to God before it gets to you. And when it gets to God, all those arrows they shoot at you, they are broken in Jesus name is above you because underneath his wings will you abide look at this in psalm 91 verse 4 psalm 91 we're reading from verse 4 he is before you he is behind you he is above you in psalm 91 reading from verse 4 he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust and his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler any fear in your heart any timidity over there he goes before you he comes behind you he's above you and he's underneath you deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 27 deuteronomy chapter 33 and we're reading from verse 27 this is talking about the power of the almighty the arm of the almighty that is underneath you 33 verse 27 here is the assurance the lord is giving us and as you have this assurance you go out in the strength of the lord in the protection of the lord nothing evil will ever happen to you the eternal god is thy refuge and underneath 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 who 
underneath you are the everlasting arms underneath you are the everlasting arms it's before you it's behind you it's above you it's underneath you it's also around you always remember this always remember this and don't see uh, those wild wolves as if they have come they have come they're going to hurt me they are going to crush me no it's around you psalm 125 in psalm 125 reading from verse 2 it says as the mountains are round about jerusalem so the lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever even forever because look at verse 3 the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous they will not come upon you he goes before you he comes behind you he stays above you his power is underneath you and then he's around you and he is within you inside you first john chapter 4 First John chapter 4, reading from verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Ye of God, little children. Anybody there? Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. Who will overcome? You will, will overcome and say, Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, and then he is with us, with us, with you. Yeah. I said, With you, yeah. Matthew chapter 28. Verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, and lo, and behold, I am with you how often always even unto the end of the world and everybody said amen, amen. let's go first then we're going to win amen. we're going to conquer we're going to convert the people behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of the wolves go and convince them go and convict them go and convert them go and conform them to the image of christ bring them into the body bring them into the kingdom tell them the kingdom of heaven is near at hand and confirm and conserve them in the kingdom and when the trumpet shall sound those of us all of us who are preaching and our converts we're going to be with the lord in jesus name your life is protected the power of god is within you go forth and do the work of the lord let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer say today lord i'm going to do that i'm going to do that and i'm going to be a soul winner i am going to be that sheep that becomes unstoppable unbeatable and i'm going to do the work the lord has committed in my hands make up your mind go do it and you will succeed